The names of wildfires burning this summer are becoming household names, especially if your house is in the path of one. Scott Logan explains the methodology that fire managers traditionally use to name a fire. Traditionally, but not always. Initial attack crews, first on the scene, almost always come up with a fire's name, and they usually follow a time-honored practice. Most wildfires are named after common geographic locations. Uh, for example, a mountain, a creek, a river, a uh, unique feature like Teepee Springs. It's near a little area that there are some springs, obviously. And the soda fire is named after Soda Creek. This makes it easier for other arriving crews and aircraft to know where the fire is. And the shorter the name, the better, because it's going to be written over and over in endless reports. And one of the most famous Foothills fires in recent memory was called the 8th Street Fire. Why? Well, that's because it burned right off 8th Street. But if geography is key, then how did we get a blaze named the Not Creative Fire in northern Idaho? The Idaho Department of Lands has a simple, sensible answer. There was no easily identifiable ridge or location nearby that had a name they could use. They were more interested in getting resources started on the fire, and that's why they just went with that, so they could start initial attack. A fire can also be named after its cause or origin, like that Boise Foothills fire started by a bicyclist burning some used toilet paper. It's universally being called the, well, you know, Scott Logan, KBOI 2 News, Boise. And Scott tells us that even power lines have been used in the past to name a fire.